everybody a second to jump on. So for props today, uh, if you've got a yoga mat, uh, a cushion, uh, mat's not necessary, but we're gonna use it to roll up to prop under heels if squatting is an issue for you, or uh, a towel works, um, any cushions you might have lying around, all that stuff works. So we'll just give it another little bit here, and then we'll get going. Okay, so we're gonna start out today, instead of on our backs and checking with our breath, we're gonna do that in a second, but first things first, I want you to separate your feet a little bit wider than uh, hip width or shoulder width. Point your toes out just a little bit, and then just come down and test out your squat. So as you're, com as you're coming down, try to keep a neutral spine. Go nice and slow and see where you lose that. See what that looks like, and then come back up. So that's our test, and then we're gonna do a bunch of mobility stuff for ankles, for feet, for knees, for hips, and we're gonna see, hopefully, if that affects some change on your squat, because everybody's outer shape is going to be very different depending on your anatomy, how long your femur bones are, how long your shin bones are, um, how your hips rotate. So we'll uh, investigate, dive down deep into uh, the mechanics of, of all of those actions that make up the archetype of the squat, and we'll revisit it at the end. And hopefully there's a good felt change for you. So we're gonna start on all fours or in a quadruped position. So you can pat underneath your knees if this is uncomfortable for your knees on the outside. And we're just gonna start with some spinal segmentation. So mobilizing the spine is always a good place to start no matter what you're working on for your movement practice. So we're gonna push up, resist the floor away with your knees, with your hands, let the head and neck relax. Pull the belly button up like you're pulling an angry cat. Feel the tailbone reach down, heads heavy. And then from here, we're gonna start from the bottom. So start, leave your head and your shoulders and your upper spine where it is and start to untuck your pelvis. So you're lifting your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Try to resist the other parts of your spine coming along for the ride. Start to find that curve in your low back again as you soften the belly down. And then keep that action going now all the way up your spine. So feel the ribs come down, the sternum. Finally, now up to the neck, you can start to lift the head and gaze forward. And then we'll do the same thing, moving back up to flexion from extension. So keep your gaze where it is. Resist the ground away a little bit. And then start to tuck the tailbone down. So I'm pulling my tailbone down in between my legs. And then focusing on what the front of my body is doing. So I'm lifting up my low belly, lifting up my belly button, trying to get it as far away from the ground as possible, lifting up those little ribs. Finally, the sternum. So I'm going to feel the spine lift up in between the shoulder blades and then tip your head down. Good. And then let some of that go. And then we're going to get into the hips right away with some hip cars. So hip cars, we're going to take the hip joint and move it through internal and external rotation as we trace a circle with the knee. So you want the rest of your, your, your pelvis, your body, to stay as still as possible. So you want to create a little bit of tension to help facilitate that. So tense up your belly a little bit, push the floor away, squeeze that right leg, and then pull the left knee into the chest. You don't want to lose that curve. You don't want to come up this far. So keep that natural curve in your lumbar spine and then do something with your foot. Let's, because we're uh, squatting today, let's pull the toes up towards the shin. And as you move the knee out to the side, like a doggy going to the bathroom at the fire hydrant, and then knee move and hip moves back into extension. Come back in, this is half of a rep. 
to our flexion and then reverse the movement. So push the foot up to the ceiling, open the knee up to the side without letting the right side dip down and pull in. Let's do that one more time. Pull the thigh up towards the chest, out to the side, rotate that foot up when that's our half rep and then reverse the movement. Hip extension, try to pull that heel in towards the bum. Knee comes out to the side without losing the stability of your right side and then come back in. So if you're doing that properly, it should, it should be hard work. You should be really working to feel the thigh bone move in your pelvis. I'll turn around and we'll do the other side. So right side or just switch side, whatever you're working on. So again, create a little bit of tension. So I'm nice and stable. What you could do here as well to, to keep you honest is you could put a, a block or a book on the back of your pelvis to keep you honest. So again, squeeze the, come into dorsiflexion, so toes come in towards the shin, knee comes out to the side, and then come into hip extension, feel the back of your thigh working, those hamstrings lighting up, and then reverse our action, back up, so we don't wanna borrow from the spine here, so keep the spine neutral, just move the thigh up, knee comes out to the side, and then bring it back into the chest. One more time. So up and in as far as you can go without rounding the spine. Knee out to the side without losing the integrity of the left side. Up to extension. And then half of a rep here. So push that foot up towards the ceiling. Pull the heel in towards the bum. Knee out to the side. Keep the knee there. Rotate the lower leg down. And pull the thigh in. And relax. So hopefully you didn't lose whatever was on your low back there. Okay, from here, come and take a seat. And then this leg can extend. You can sit up on something too if it's more comfortable, or you can tuck this leg in. Then I'm gonna take my right arm underneath my right leg, and then I'm gonna take my right hand to my left elbow, and then put my left hand at the front of my knee. So I, we want to feel here, so we think about the knee as a hinge joint where you just have flexion and extension. But we also have tibial rotation. So if you put your hand at the front of your knee and you move your foot, your toes to the inside and to the outside, you should feel some movement there. And that's pretty, a pretty important part to the health of your knee. So we'll do some movement there where we'll be able to feel that tibial rotation happening. So just relax your knee or your leg on your arm. Point your toes towards the inside and then lift up into extension. Rotate the toes out to the other side, lateral rotation, and then pull down and squeeze that heel in. So we're gonna get some of that activation that we want in our squat later. One more that way, lift up, move it laterally and back down. Now keep it there and we'll change directions. Up, over, down, Shift sides, lift up, medial side, and down. Next, same leg, get, interlace your hands and put them over that knee. Now we don't want that movement to be happening because we're gonna focus on the ankle. So point the toes down, move the toes towards the inside without compensating up the chain, come up, so Maximum dorsiflexion, toes are pulling up towards the shin. Move out to the side and then point down again. Let's do that one more time in that direction. Hopefully you're avoiding some foot cramps, but we're mobilizing the toes at the same time as we're mobilizing the ankle. So move slowly and really feel your end ranges in all directions. There we go, and then switch sides. So leg can stay out to this uh, out extended, or you can tuck it up underneath you, however you're comfortable. Left arm underneath, hand comes to elbow, and then my right hand on top of um, where your lower leg bones meet your knee. And now again, just feel as you move, you rotate your foot in and out, medially and laterally, if you can feel some movement there. That's good, we want that, we want to encourage that. 
And now we'll add flat chin and extension. So pull the heel in as you rotate the foot out, lift up, extend, switch inside, and then we do our circles here. Now keep the foot pointing medially or in, pointing inside, rotate out, and down again. One more in that direction. Good. Take the, the arm out from underneath the arm, clasp the hands over, and then we'll focus on the ankle. So point the toes down, so plantar flex, rotate in or medially, pull the toes up, that dorsiflexion that we're gonna be after in our squatting, out to the side, lift the inside of the foot a little bit, so it's a little bit of inversion, and some eversion out to the side, and then reverse your circle. Come back up, pull the toes up towards the shin. Feel the front of the shin. Start to activate a little bit. Good, then both feet down. And then this is a nice position to work toe mobility because if you feel like some are a little bit unresponsive, you can actually physically move them with your fingers. So press the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and the center of your heel down and lift your arches up without changing that relationship to the ground. Keep those three parts of your feet in contact with the ground, and then lift and spread your toes. Good, see how much height you can get while keeping the, the, two, the two bases of the little toe and the big toe down on the ground. Now place your toes down, but keep the big toes, or the great toes, up. Good. Repeat, repeat that a few times. So toes come down, but big toes stay up. And now release the toes down, and then big toes will stay down and toes will lift. Good, push all the toes down and now just lift the big toes. And then see if you can tap them. Maybe there's not a lot of movement happening. That's okay. Maybe you have to hold the other toes down while you do it. Also okay. And if you have to help the toes to move, that's great too because you're tracing the movement path so that one day they will move. Now lift all the toes. Now place the small toes, pinky toes down. And then like, a, like you're playing piano, coming back towards the big toe, and then see if you can reverse the movement. Your fingers might start doing weird stuff. Good, and let that go. Okay, we're gonna come to our backs. And from here, just get a sense of your breath, how you're breathing today. So try to breathe through your nose. Feel the breath start really um, low in the abdomen, just at the top of your pelvis, and then feel your low back, your sides, your belly as you inhale, and then it'll move up into your rib cage, so feel the ribs flare, lift, expand, and then exhale, relax. Now on your next inhale, tip the pelvis back and slowly lift the pelvis, the low back, the mid back, hands can press down, to the ground, when you get up to the top, try to drop the low ribs down and then just feel the extension in your hips. Pull the heels towards your head to light up those hamstrings a little bit. And then connect to your breath in the same way that we did without the effort of the bridge. So feel those, the, the tripods of your feet Feel the muscles of your legs start to talk to you a little bit more. Let's do one more breath. And then exhale, come back down. You can let the legs go from side to side. Just let that go for a minute. Reset, tilt the pelvis back, come back up. So use the hands now, turn the palms down so you a little bit more uh, anchored and stable in the upper body, and then press into your left foot. So really drive that left heel and the left forefoot down. Don't let your pelvis shift 
and then pull the right knee in towards your chest. Similar to our hip cars before, don't lose the curve in your low back. Now, let's see if we can find the squat position. So don't just pull the knee in, so that's our hip flexion. Try to pull the toes up to, uh, to the shin. So feel the front of that shin light up. And then at the same time, squeeze the heel towards your bum. Let's take one more breath here. Starting to get a little bit shaky, that's good. Feel everything working. And then relax, foot comes down and come down. You can straighten the legs. Move the bum from side to side or a windshield wiper. And then reset and same thing. Tilt the pelvis back, come back up. Feel that hip extension without the spine coming along for the ride. Drive the uh, hands down so you're stable in the upper body. Right heel, right forefoot, and then without shifting the pelvis, come to the toes of the left foot and then pull that knee in. From here, activate the foot, pull the toes up to the shin. Again, don't let that right side droop down. Stay active, keep pushing up. Let's make that left leg work as hard as the right leg. So toes come up to shin, heel squeezes into bum, try to lift that knee up a little bit higher. You're still breathing all around your spine. One more breath. Foot comes down and relax. So that was good. That woke everything up for me. I hope it did the same for you. So that's the shape we're making when we're doing our squat. From here, extend the left leg. Bring the right knee up so we're not flexed as much as we were. Move that thigh away from your belly. Put your finger, your index finger, on your knee. Imagine there's an X now on the top of your thigh, right in the middle. Now we don't want the knee to move. We want the thigh to rotate. So really feel kind of where your hip, you can take your hand to your hip crease. So not the bony prominence at the front of your pelvis, but deep where the femur bone comes into the pelvis. So now move your foot out to the side as that X on your thigh turns in towards your body, turns towards your left shoulder. So that's your internal rotation. You'll feel the outer hip really light up. Try not to pull that hip up. You just want that true movement of what's happening with the thigh bone in your pelvis. And now the opposite way, so externally rotate your thigh, so your finger shouldn't move, and now your heel comes towards the left as the X on your thigh rotates past your right shoulder. Good, let that go. Okay, now remember, try to take a, a mental snapshot of what that looked like on your right, and we'll compare it to the left. So left index finger to my left kneecap, or just the base of the kneecap is fine, or the top of it rather, or where your thigh meets your kneecap. Flex your foot, again, finding that sort of squat foot, that dorsiflexion. Imagining again that X on your thigh, we're going to go internal rotation first. So without lifting that outer left hip, rotate that X towards your right shoulder as your foot opens up laterally or to the outside of that left leg or that left thigh. So this is a struggle. This is a bit of a struggle bus for me. I don't have very good internal rotation on the left, so try to feel those muscles in the outer hip light up, okay? And now go the other way. That X on your thigh is going to open towards the left as your foot comes across your body to the right. This is your external rotation. So this is a bit better. So the rotation of that capsule is a big part of the, the, the health of the joint. Okay, and let that go. Ooh, so that's the, that's the prep work, so we're working hard there. Okay, we're going to come to a combat stand. So I've got, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm on a yoga mat, I've also got a towel. So uh, cushions can be good too, so you, you want to be able to adapt or prop as you need as you move through these positions. So combat stance is kind of like your half squat. So I've got my left heel right underneath my, my left glute. But if this is an issue for you, you can sort of um, 
prop in between your lower leg and the back of that thigh to give yourself a little bit more room. You can sit up on a stool or a block as well to close that gap if the knee flexion um, isn't great for you. So you, you manage that however you want. What we want here is we're going to work on the dorsiflexion of that right ankle. So you can be open at a little bit of an angle here. So again, finding that squat shape, right? I hope everybody sees that and feels that. Now, try to turn your belly button towards your thigh and then use the weight of your body to get yourself a little bit more range. So knee is not collapsed to the inside, sort of over the middle toes, and then I'm weighted my torso on my thigh, and then see if you can add a little bit of a reach as you lengthen that lever. Now wherever your hands are, so hands can be down supporting you as well, start to activate so you feel where you're getting a stretch at the back of that calf and your Achilles tendon. See if you can light those up a little bit by gas pedaling your foot down to the ground. So press your forefoot into the ground. Let's do it for three, two, one, and then relax, stay there, and then use the front of your shin and your ankle and your foot, almost like you're lifting your toes off the ground, to pull you deeper into that dorsiflexion. Good, so come out of that. Before we shift sides, you can give your leg a little jiggle there. We're gonna come and we're gonna do, we're gonna work on the flexibility of the plantar fascia or the bottoms of the feet. So again, prop if you need pillows, you could do this uh, with padding underneath your knees. But if knee flexion is an issue, please put something between your calves and your hamstrings. So from here, it's gonna, we're going to come to a tall kneel. I'm going to tuck my toes, and then I'm going to sit back down. If this is abysmal, this is terrible, you start to get the shakes or the sweats, you can lean your weight forward, and you can do the same thing. Okay, so toes are tucked. You're just going to breathe. And then come to a tall kneel, point the toes back and then come to sit. And we're going to alternate between those two positions a few times. And you can add the arms, so arms can lift as you come to the tall kneel, point the toes back, and relax. Let's do that two more times. Still breathing. Good, and now for the calves, because the mobility of the calves can also affect your squat, how it feels and uh, how it looks on the outside, the, the shape of your squat. So all we're going to do here is I'm going to cross the left or my right leg on top of my left leg, so my lower leg, and I'm going to sit back. You can gauge how that feels. And then switch left lower leg or left shin crosses over my right calf and I ease myself back. Now if you, can, if you can tolerate a bit more, you might do it without the support of your hands. And again, if that's terrible, then you can modify by taking a lot of the weight onto your hands. And then what we can layer on top of that is you can ease back into kind of a crisscross applesauce, come forward onto your knees, and then switch sides. So we're getting a little bit of a massage of the calves as we move the feet too through plantar flexion and actually just mostly plantar flexion here but that's good we're getting a nice stretch at the front of the ankle okay let's switch sides so again modify your combat squat or this combat stance and um, as, as you need to make it comfortable for the, the right leg, because we're working the, the, left, the left leg or the left ankle now. So bring your belly or your torso, so find the angle that's comfortable for you. A lot of us, in order for this to feel good, that knee and the hip needs to abduct or open a little bit to the outside. 
and then make sure that knee's tracking over the middle toes. So adjust an angle that's comfortable for you. Prop as you need between the calf and the thigh of the other foot. And then adjust as you need. Try to keep the heel down. I didn't mention that on the other side. Really important, the heel's anchored here. And then you can keep the contact with the torso, the chest, and top of the thigh, leaning into it more. And then you can add the reach. Still breathing, feeling that stretch in the low calf and that lower leg. Now from here, wherever position you're in, for three or four seconds, let's add the activation of pressing the foot down like you're gas pedaling the forefoot into the ground to light up those tissues that are already under stretch. So keep pushing, body weight, torso still in contact with the thigh, press the floor away, with the bottom of that left foot. And now finally, relax, stay there, ease into the stretch a little bit more if your body lets you, and then try to pick up, lift up the toes and light up the front of the shin and see if that can pull you deeper into the stretch. Good. A little shimmy leg there. So my sister Sarah asked me, actually this class is designed for her because she really struggles with her squat. So I designed this class with her in mind. She also asked for a snack break. So if you need a snack, if your belly's grumbling, go grab yourself a snack. It's <laughs> a good time to do it. Okay, we're gonna come into a low lunge. So we start with our right side with our combat stance. We're gonna come to a low lunge with the right leg in front. And again, pad underneath that left knee if you need. So here we're going to go with the knee a little bit ahead of uh, that ankle, just to sort of talk to the tissues that we've been working on already. And then from here, left hand's gonna come down. You can scoot that left knee back a little bit, open the hand up as far as you need to the side, lower that right hip, keep that right foot driving down, and then inhale, lift up. Now try to light up that front leg. Imagine you're dragging that heel back. Now we're going to keep your eyes on that right hand. Pull back and come back down again. Hand can come down and then from here, just explore by rolling to the outer edge of that foot. See how that feels in your hip. You might need to back off on it a little bit. Make sure you're supported when you're doing this. So roll to the outer edge of your foot. Let the knee come in a little bit as well. Good. Now, hands on either side of that foot. Look, tuck your tailbone down. Feel the stretch increase at the front of that left hip. And then bring your hands to your thigh. So contract everything here. Drive that right foot down. We're on the top of the left foot. Press into the top of that left foot. You'll feel the stretch increase at the front of the hip. And then use your hands on your thigh. Try to pick up that left knee at the back. So we're really, we're talking to this front leg, but we're also talking to that left ankle. So press into the top of that foot. If you need the support of your hands, you can also explore that, but try to lift that back knee. One more breath. Hands come down and slowly drop that left knee down. Come back to a tall kneel and we'll switch sides. Actually turn around so that you can see me a little bit better. So left foot is in front. So again, getting into a little bit of dorsiflexion there. Don't worry about that knee going over your heel. It's perfectly safe. And just make sure that knee isn't collapsing in towards the uh, towards the inner foot, you want to angle it more towards that pinky toe. So right hand comes down to the ground. You can adjust your stance. You can go a little bit wider if you need. Drop the left hip and then lift your left arm up for a little bit of a twist. Breathe all around your spine. See how the shape changes your breathing. 
Now pull, drive that left foot down and pull it back. Press into your left knee and then with control, try to let your left hand pick you up into a little bit of a twist. One more breath here. And then slowly lower down. And then again, we're just going to scan that left hip a little bit by rolling to the outer edge. The weight can come back a little bit. You can feel a little bit of a stretch in the hamstring. And just explore kind of how these different positions feel in your body. Good. So from here, hands come to the top of that left thigh. And then point your toes back on your left foot. And then hands can start on the, on the ground if you like. And then try to press into that back foot to try to lift your knee up. Pull that, or try to slide that front foot back. It won't, but you'll feel the back of the leg fire. So keep all that going and then if you can, come to the hands on the thigh. Keep pressing into that, the top of the right foot. Breathe, try to release the toes. Hands come down, as does the knee. And bring that left foot back. Okay, we'll come to standing and we'll put all this stuff together. So my legs are, my legs are sore. But I think that's a good sign for when we recheck our squat at the end of the class. So from our standing position, again, we're going to find, so hips are going to stay forward. Like you feel your hip points here, like two lights on the car. They're going to stay forward. Weight's going to come to my left foot, come to your right toes, lift that knee straight up. But now find a little bit of abduction. So I'm going to move that knee out to the side, much like the way we would squat. So we, we really would squat like this. We have that knee open a little bit. Pull the toes up towards the shin, light up those tissues there, and now squeeze the heel towards the hamstring. Now give yourself a little bit of resistance. So you're already in your hip flexion, and now press your thigh into your hand and your hand into your thigh. You can hold on to something here. You can cling to your partner for dear life. But if stability is an issue, please grab onto something. Good, now keep it there. I know I'm asking a lot. And now with the finger on the bottom of your thigh or just above the kneecap, can we find that internal and external rotation as we did before in a supine position or on our backs? So imagine that X rotating in, rotating out. Ooh, and let it go. Okay, other side. So weight into the right foot. Come to the toes of the left foot. Bring that knee up. As you bring the knee up, make sure that you're not rounding out in the low spine. Come into your flexion, but maybe not your maximal range. You want to keep that curve in the low back. So I'm flexed here. I'm still stacked, so I'm not leaning off to the side. Pull the toes up. Find a little bit of abduction, which is just a fancy way of moving the limb away from your midline. Wobbles, again, find something to hang on to if you need to. So we're working here already, and now we're gonna add the resistance. So hand comes to thigh, thigh comes up to hand, push, resist, feel those hip flexors light up even more. Now release the resistance, try to keep the thigh where it is, fingertip towards the knee, and then rotate in. So I'm not moving my thigh in or out, but it's rotating. So my foot comes out, my thigh is rotating in, and the opposite should also be true. Oh, relax there. Okay, from here, so remember our squat that we did on the top of that foot, we're going to find that same position, but for some kickstand squats. So we're going to work the right leg first. So I'm going to 
tuck my toes, so I'm gonna be on top of my foot, and then imagine you're pulling yourself into your squat. So that combat stance when we were leaning our torso on our thighs, imagine that your hip flexors and then uh, your hamstrings at the bottom are pulling your body deeper into your squat. And at the same time, I'm giving the top of that left foot a nice stretch. Good, so maybe your kickstand squat is here. That's perfect. But you want to feel those tissues, the ones that we've been working, pulling yourself into the squat. Let's do, actually let's change the shape of the foot now. Now come to the toes. And then see, this might give you a little bit more depth because you don't have that strain on the top of the foot. Let's do one more like that. And then come, let's just switch sides. So now we're, majority of our weight is on the left leg. So really this is like single leg work because the bias is on the left foot and then kickstand, this kickstand for a reason, this is just a helper. So top of the foot, you decide the angle. Okay, I find closer to the heel works best. Use those tissues to pull you into the depth of your squat. Let's do two on the top of the foot. Still breathing. And then come to the toes. Again, modifying as you need, maybe coming to a wider stance so you've um, increased sort of your, your base, your foundation. Pull yourself into the squat and then drive the floor away to come back up. Let's do one more. Come back in and back. Good. Okay, today's no joke. Okay, now working the feet in another way, we're gonna do some toe squats. So your feet are just underneath your hip creases. Come to a toe raise. Hands are gonna come forward as a counterbalance and then stay on the balls of your feet, send the knees forward. So I guess this could be called like a, a modified sissy squat or a toe squat. Try to keep your balance as you drive back up. Let's try to do three. So again, even though we're on the balls of the feet, we've made our base of support a little bit narrower and trickier. Try to pull yourself into the squat in a similar way. So using those hip flexors to get you down here and then if you can go further, try to bring the heels closer to the bum and then drive back out. Great. So now let's come to our squat. So whatever your squat looks like. So I suggested a towel. So you can use a rolled up towel and that can go under your heels. Another option is simply rolling up your yoga mat and then getting your heels propped up or conversely roll up a little bit more and you can find your squat shape but you're really in a seated position. So you find what works best. So let's start in a seated position but in your squat shape. So dorsiflexed in the ankles, knee flexion, hip flexion, right? So we're really in kind of what would be your, your, your maximal positions in, in all three. So it's a challenging position to get into a squat. So from here, arms are gonna come inside the knees and then starting with the right leg, see if you can roll to the outer edge of your foot as you move the right knee away from the right tricep. Let's do that two or three times. So for any of you that maybe saw my little minute mobility that I posted yesterday, this was the snippet of the class that I posted. And now other side. So I'm trying to actively, externally rotate my hip and pull it away from my arm. Good, now you can come behind you and make this one a little bit easier. Feet can come a bit wider. Find internal rotation. So the goal here isn't to get that knee to the ground. Honor your body, make sure that your knees aren't talking to you here or your knee isn't talking to you. And now we're internally rotating, which we explored in uh, 
different positions already today. Other side. You can also be doing this from an active squat. Okay, I'm just demoing where I think most people might be, but feel free to do it unsupported. Okay, or maybe with something underneath your heels. A broomstick works as well. Good. Okay, from here, we're just going to, hands are gonna come forward. I'm going to open my right arm back and come back to the middle and then twist by opening my left arm back. So this is one option for a twist. Let's do it one more time on this side. And then another twist, I'm gonna show you this version unsupported. So my left arm is gonna to come to my right ankle and I'm going to prop my left shoulder on the inside of that left thigh and then lift that right arm up. Come back down, let's do that three times. And then change sides, right shoulder sneaks on the inside of that right knee, clasp my left ankle, and then lift from here. And notice how the sides are different in terms of your accessibility to it, your breath. Let's do one more. Great, and then the last thing is from our standing position, we're just going to actively pull ourselves using all the tissues we've worked into our squat. So again, you could have a block or a cushion at the base of your squat, but notice how your squat feels now compared to the beginning of the class where I hope everybody was already tuned in and you were already, you, were, you, you checked in with your squat kind of cold without a warm up and to see how it felt in your body and also the shape that you made. So as you come down, imagine your hip flexors pulling you in, knees are going forward, Feel my hip crease is going back. And now when I get towards the bottom, or I've kind of got 90 degree angles going in my legs, now can I use my hamstrings to pull myself deeper into my squat. Now push, use your glutes, your hamstrings to come up out of that base position, and then extend your hips, again using your glutes to come back up again. So let's do that one more time. So nice and slow. So maybe, so my sister Sarah, maybe this is where you end, or maybe you guys might prop underneath your heels to give yourself a little bit more dorsiflexion by coming into the squat in a similar way. So again, imagining, so you should be feeling all the tissues that we really worked on in class today. So as I bring my quads, so the front of my thighs closer to my belly, those hip flexors are contracted, they're shortening, they're working, they're pulling me deeper. And now feel your hamstrings start to light up. Come down to the ground. Don't collapse, stay active. Try to keep using those tissues to pull yourself deeper and deeper and deeper, and then push the floor away. Pat the air and deepen your belly. Keep that tension and then use all that to come back up to standing. So that was copper squat. A little, a little sneak peek at squat mechanics, um, how we break down the squat to build it back up again to hopefully make a healthier and uh, pain-free and a more accessible squat for everybody. So I hope you enjoyed it today. If you did, um, please go to Grainsel, G-R-A-I-N, D-E-S-E-L, grandesel.ca, a local food bank and community support for persons and families in need, and uh, make a donation if you're able to. So thank you so much for practicing with me today. Um, Elsa and Kate, if you're watching, and Sammy and Rowan, I hope you guys had fun. Sarah, I hope this felt good in your body.